And our Savior said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, he that believeth in me, he shall never die. We have come today to celebrate, and I do mean celebrate, the wonderful life and legacy of Brother George Williams. Can we put our hands together for his wonderful life? Come on, family, you can do better than that. Amen for him. He lived a truly wonderful and fantastic life. We welcome those who are uh, uh, viewing this service virtually. Ask that you pray for this family as we celebrate the life of Brother George Williams. One of the great hymns of the church he loved to sing. We all know he had that wonderful uh, baritone voice. I don't have a baritone voice, but I do have a saxophone. We want to play in memory of him. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Amen. And we are surely thank God for that blessed assurance. Amen. At this time, the Reverend Haroline Shackelford will come at this time uh, and lift up our invocation as well as our scripture lessons. It's prayer time. Let us all go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Lord God, we come this morning thanking you for allowing us to see another day. And God, we thank you for this family. We thank you for the friends. All right, all right. God, we thank you for the life of George Williams. Yes, yes. God, we thank you because he touched many lives along the way. God, we thank you because he served you faithfully yes. as long as he could. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you Lord. God, we thank you because he loved Bethel AME yes. and would do anything to help the church move onward and upward. Oh, yes. God, we ask that his legacy 
be remembered and cherished and passed on down through the generations. Yes, yes. God, we just bless you and we ask that you give this family, give these friends, give them your peace, yes. your comfort, and your strength. Right. Knowing that George fought a good fight and he kept the faith throughout. Yes. God, we ask that you have your way in our midst today. Do what only you can do. Yes. Let your Holy Ghost reign supreme. Let your will be done. Yes. Let your way happen, God, because your way is the only way. Right. Bless everyone who will participate in this homegoing celebration. Yes. God bless pastors. He brings a rhema word that will help us move forward and move upward in your way and in your will. Yes. God, and that will give peace and comfort and strength right. to those who hear the word. Yeah. God, we ask that you bless not only those assembled in this place, but those assembled throughout the airwaves, God. Yeah. Just give them everyone what they need. Yeah. And if there's one today who doesn't know you in the pardoning of their sins, All right. All right. God, this is a perfect day for them to turn their lives over to you. And God, for those that have strayed away, we pray that they will come back and decide to recommit and rededicate to serving you and your kingdom. Oh God, we bless you. And we bind up anything, any spirit that's not of you in the name of Jesus. God, we praise you, we bless you, we give you the glory. And it's in Jesus' precious, comforting, peace-giving, strengthening name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Our Old Testament lesson is found in the 23rd Psalm, and I'll be reading the message version because it's dear to me. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows, you find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Right. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. Yeah. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. That's what George is saying to us today. And then our Old Testament scripture is found in the book of John, the 14th chapter. And I'll be ver reading verses 1 through 4. Don't let this throw you. You trust God, don't you? Trust me. There's plenty of room for you in my father's home. If that weren't so, would I have told you that I'm on my way to get a room ready for you? Yeah. And if I'm on my way to get a room, your room ready, I'll come back and get you right. so you can live where I live and you already know the road I'm taking. Uh -huh. May God bless the hearers and the readers of his holy word. Family, let the word be your comfort, your strength, and your peace in the days, months, and years ahead. God bless you and keep you, and my love to you. Some of you I haven't seen, especially Robert Jr. I haven't seen him since he was a young man. Amen. It's been many years, but God bless all of you. Amen. Let the church say amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Shackelford. Uh, she told me she's been knowing Brother George for 60 years. Amen. And so we thank God there's so many that have a similar testimony. At this time, I'm going to play instrumental solo. Uh, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he's watching over you and me. Amen.
leave my mic up. Amen. I think it's on mute. And is that your testimony? His eyes on the sparrow. And I know he's watching. Come on, give God a praise because he's taking care of us and he's taking care of George. Amen. This time we'll have acknowledgments by Sister Ellen Stewart and Church Resolution. Amen. The family would certainly like to acknowledge gratefully all acts of kindness that has been shown to them during the illness and certainly the transitioning of our brother George. Our condolences to the family of brother George L. Williams. God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Reverend Andre P. Jefferson, Sr., 
ministerial staff, officers, and members of Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church of Hampton, Virginia. Extend our prayers of comfort, condolence, and love to you in the loss of your loved one, Brother George L. Williams. We ask God, our Heavenly Father, to secure you and your family in his arms of love. We humbly pray and believe that he will, for he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Joshua 1 and 5. The Bible tells us in Revelation 21, 3 and 4, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Our God is too wise to err and too just to be unkind. Keep the faith, don't waver. Continue to trust in him. And we will be in constant prayer for you. The Bethel Church family shares your pain and your grief. And we believe that Brother George is now resting in the arms of Jesus Christ. He is at peace with God, free from pain and all the cares of this world. Sincerely in Christ, Reverend Andre Jefferson, Sr. Bethel's resolution to the family of the late brother George Lawrence Williams. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4 and 7. Whereas it please our almighty Father to carry to the land of pure delight, our dear dedicated brother in George L. Williams, Thursday, December 30th, 2021. Whereas he was born to the late brother George and sister Maud Williams on November 20th, 1925, in Lake Wales, Florida. Whereas Brother George attended the public schools in Lake Wales, further matriculation was acquired from North Carolina A&T, the Aggie Pride, where he received his Bachelor of Science degree in 1950. Whereas he served the United States Navy in the Pacific Theater during World War II, where he retired Completing his service to his country, he became an employee's relations specialist at Langley Air Force Base, the first African American in the Central Civilian Personnel Office. Whereas he was married to his lovely bride, the late Miss Blanche Rigsby Williams, for over 42 years. And from this union, the apple of his eye Miss Vargeries. Whereas community wise, Brother George became a member of Kappa Alpha Psi Phi fraternity, served as president of the Parents Teachers Association, the PTA at Union and RR Moton Elementary Schools. He held the distinction of being the last president of the citywide PTA council prior to its integration. Additionally, Brother George served as vice president of the local branch of the NAACP, which held their monthly meetings at 94 West Lincoln Street. Whereas he was a distinctive true Methodist member, serving diligently and musically sharing his melodious deep second bass tones as a member of the chancel choir and the Bethel male chorus. 
whereas he and his family sat on the third pew, four corner, near the window right side of the church, facing the pulpit at 106 and at 94 West Lincoln Street. Brother George will be missed for his kindness from 8 to 80. If he knew you needed assistance any time, anywhere, mm -hmm. he would assist you with education, mm -hmm. career, and whatever or wherever else assistance was needed. Whereas his immaculate dress, professionalism, military stature were always beyond reproach. Therefore, be it resolved that our pastor, Reverend Andre Pierre Jefferson, Sr., the officers and members of Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church, do hereby express our heartfelt sympathy and sincerely hope that this resolution will lighten the burden of your bereavement. Be it also resolved that you will continue to prayerfully seek God's guidance and remember he is too wise to err and too just to be unkind. Done by the order of Reverend Andre P. Jefferson, Sr., the officers and members of Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church, on this the fifth day of January in the year of our Lord, 2022. I fear no foe, I fawn no friend, I loathe no life, nor dread my end. Eternal Father, strong to save, whose arms have bound the restless wave. Oh, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea, the Navy hymn. Anchors away, my boys, anchors away, the Navy song. Reverend Andre Jefferson, Sr., Pastor Miss Lisa McCaskill, Secretary. My thanks also to Miss Eddie Williams and Sister Helen Whitaker in the preparation of this paper. Our prayers are with you. God bless one and all. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister uh, Stewart. And now this time, we'll be favored with reflections uh, from the family by Brother uh, Norris Middleton and uh, from Bethel AME Church, her class leader, sister, his class leader, Sister Celeste Jones, is also a member of the family. So he had two family members. Amen. Come on down. It's hard to believe that I have to follow the professionalism of Mrs. Stewart. So I'm going to do my best all right, all right. Uh, to walk in her shoes. All right. Good morning, Pastor Jefferson, family, friends, Reverend Shackerford. When I walked up to the church today and I saw Renita Wilson, I realized something that this is the end of an era. There were so many great men that lived during that time. And I can't call him brother because I knew him when I was a child. So I have to call him Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams is the last of those men that reared us, that loved us, that embraced us, and that chastised us when we were wrong. Um, he was truly a man of honor. Mr. Williams was a strong black man. He set a standard through his words, through his actions, and through his deeds of how an African-American man should conduct himself in his community. Brother Williams was not a man of many words, but one of action who loathed people who were had inaction. He demonstrated this through 
not his words, but those of you who knew him knew his facial expressions, his gestures, and his body language. Body and language. they spoke for him. That's right. And you knew exactly what he meant through those three things. Mr. Williams loved many things, such as dressing. Mm -hmm. I envied his two-toned shoes. <laughs> he was dapper every Sunday, right. often in many different hats. Mm -hmm. I think he owned as many hats as the women. Mm -hmm. He was always in the latest fashion. He loved singing in the men's chorus, play, playing cards, being a member of his fraternity, Kappa Alpha Psi, being a member of the um, Senior Citizens Club. That's right. And he just generally loved having a good time. That's right. There were three loves above all others. His beloved college, a and mm -hmm. his family, especially his wife Blanche, and his daughter Maudrice. And he loved most of all the church body here at Bethel a and for a long time, I thought Mr. Williams lived at Bethel <laughs> because he was always here when I came. Right. So I said, hmm, does he really live at home? Hmm. I always questioned myself. I've known him since 1967. All right. I don't want to tell my age, but I have. Some of you can't even fathom 1967. Well. Brother Williams always worked tirelessly with many other men of the church to ensure that our churches at Lincoln Street um, were taken care of. Mm -hmm. He made sure that our new church at Lincoln Street, which many of you now consider our old church, um, became a reality. He was watchful of the grounds and diligent about ensuring finances were in order. He and his family attended regularly together, and he made sure that more Greece participated in church activity. He and many other men of the church made sure that the needs of the congregation and pastor were met in a timely manner. He never hesitated, though, to intervene when he felt that a pastor was not a good fit for our congregation. Until his body would no longer permit, Brother Williams continued to attend Bethel in person. Mm -hmm. Best of all in life, he accepted Jesus Christ as his savior before departing his earthly home. I thank God for putting such a wonderful example of a man in our path. In Jesus' name, we just give honor today to Brother William's life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on, you could do better than that. It was well done, well done. We do appreciate that. At this time, uh, there's no way we can fully encapsulate his wonderful life um, in words. But at this time, we'll be a, a silent reading of the obituary. Amen. And then after that, I will play a, a solo uh, to uh, uh, thank God for his wonderful life. The obituary of George Lawrence Williams. Amen. And I thank God as we think of brother, brother George Williams, when the saints go marching in, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Amen. Thank you. 
I had to play for George because Sister uh, Stewart, he would always joke with me when I would try to sing. And he said, Reverend, stay out of the microphone. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise in here, everybody. Amen. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me today as we honor your servant who deserves to be honored. We thank you in advance for the comfort you'll give, not Andre, but you. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. Amen. Certainly to this dear and wonderful family, I want to extend uh, to you a heartfelt sympathy uh, in the passing of your dear grandfather, great-grandfather, uncle, uh, patriarchal uh, relative in this family, and our dear brother in Christ, Brother George uh, Williams. Uh, uh, I want you to know because of COVID, you know, this church would be overflowing, but there are many members of Bethel who are viewing online, but I want you to know uh, that they are sending their, expressing their sympathy to you as well. One of the privileges that you have as a pastor when you've been here about 20 years, and that's me, is that you get a chance to know people over a period of time. And I've got 20 wonderful years of memories of Brother George, uh, a faithful and staunch member here at Bethel. Uh, he told me of his upbringing in Florida, and how his father was a staunch AME, and his mother was Baptist. You can make it if you try, amen. He would say when they left home on Sunday, he and his father would go one way to the AME church, and his mother and his brother would go to the Baptist church. And certainly that godly legacy is in George. Uh, he said his father was a staunch and devoted member, a pillar of his church in Florida. And he would say that there was nothing that his father would not do for his church. And certainly I can say there was nothing George would not do for his beloved Bethel AME church. Somebody ought to say amen. He loved his North Carolina a and Aggies, and until recent years, he would always make it down for homecoming. They believe they have the best homecoming in the world. Uh, I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> he, <laughs> okay, there's another witness out there, okay. He was so excited about his football team and other sports teams as they would do well, and he would talk some trash to me when, he would, then when they would beat Norfolk State University guess where I went to school, amen. I believe that Brother George would be overjoyed that his homegoing service is on Founders Day of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Come on, give the Lord a prayer. He would be excited that he was celebrating on his fraternity's uh, uh, founding. Uh, it, just, it wasn't planned, it just worked out that way. I salute his work, his labor of love at Bethel because he gave himself fully to this church. One time he was our steward pro tem or chief steward of the steward board and the steward board is responsible for the ministry of the church but uh, also to take care of the pastor, make sure the pastor get paid, make sure the pastor is all right and also with serving with distinction as a trustee member as well. I can remember him finally as a beloved caretaker of Sister Lucille Caffey. In later years I enjoyed going to his house and visiting with him on Whipple Street, the famous street. And he told me many wonderful stories about his life, always with that, with that smile and laughter. I can remember that laughter forever, amen. He and my wife's father, uh, Clayton Drake, used to be seatmates at uh, 94 Lincoln Street at the old Bethel, and they would be sitting right next to my wife, and they would be cutting up, and that's a kind of good cutting up in church, amen. Uh, in the last years, he and Brother Drake were the most senior men of the church, but now they have gone from the church militant to the church triumphant. That wonderful baritone voice, if you heard that voice, uh, you would just, it would send shivers down your spine that that voice could resonate across the church. That I want to salute this family. God bless you, family. He loved his family, especially his grandchildren. Uh, Comet and uh, Robert Bobby the fourth he would brag about you maybe you didn't know that but he'd brag about you and tell me uh, with joy about your accomplishments in life uh, he supported you in your lives uh, but when it was best for him not to live alone I was joyful to see that Carmen you and your husband he modified your house to make room for granddaddy with every convenience he had it going on 
He trusted you emphatically, and he didn't have to worry about anything because you took care of him. To this family, I want to say job well done. The Bible says if you honor your, come on, give God a praise. When you honor your father and your mother, the Bible says your days will be long. I can truly say that in the life of George uh, Williams, he was a member of Bethel of good and regular standing. And I believe our loss is heaven's gain. I want to lift up several scriptures for your consideration as we uh, honor his life today. First Peter uh, 5 and 4, Revelation 4 and 4, and Revelation 4 and 10. Just because I lifted up three scriptures don't mean we're going to be here all day. They're short scriptures. And the first one, 1 Peter 5 and 4, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. Revelation 4 and 4, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And Revelation 4, 10 and 11, and the four and 20 elders fell down before him that sat at the throne and worshiped him that lived forever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou have created all things for thy pleasure. They were created. But brothers and sisters, in the life of Brother George William, of a sermon, memorial sermon must have a theme, let this be it. We shall wear a crown. We shall wear a crown. Uh, beloved sisters and brothers, I must stop by to tell you, if you are prepared in your spiritual life with God, you shall wear a crown. In our text of focus on today in Revelation, we see that there are 24 elders uh, which seem to represent the company of the redeemed in heaven. They, uh, they evidently bear all the characteristics of the glorified church in Revelation 3 and 5, they were clothed in right, white raiment. Revelation 5 and 8 uh, through 14, they worshiped the Lamb. In Revelation 5 and 9, they have been redeemed by the blood. In Revelation 4 and 4, they are round, around the throne before God. And in Revelation 5, 10 and 11, they are crowned with glory and honor. It also says that they are kings and priests under God, and they hope to reign on the earth. Beloved, I stop by to tell you, if you live right spiritually, you shall wear a crown. Revelation 4 tells us that when the elders got into the presence of Jesus, they cast their crowns before Jesus. You see, crowns are a symbol of glory, honor, and put up, uh, they are put upon a person uh, by God as a grace to reward reward them for their faithfulness and the fulfillment of his promise. I'm talking about a heavenly reward. I'm glad this afternoon that when you work for the Lord, the Lord will reward you. Not maybe, but he will pay for pay you for what you have done. Now, because you can accumulate all the material possessions and wealth you want in this world. And, and it's good to have some nice things in your life. But when you close your eyes and pass from this life, you better know that only what you do for Christ is going to last. Preach Andre Jefferson. You got to understand you can't take one car one material possession, you can't take your house, and you've never seen a U-Haul trailer hooked up to a hearse going to the cemetery. I stopped by to tell you, you only what you do for Christ is going to last. And church, that's good news. When I think about it, I got to praise God because not only will God save us from our sins, but if we serve him, we will receive a, a heavenly reward. Oh, bless his name. First Corinthians the ninth chapter in verse 24 says, Know them that run this race, but only one receives the prize. So run that you might obtain. And then he says that, that every man you strive to master temporal things. Now do it. They try to do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we try to obtain what we do for God for an incorruptible crown. Now, beloved, I stopped by to tell you about crown. 
crowns that were given in the Bible days. In the athletic contest, an athlete would compete to be first in an event. And the one who won the event would receive a wreath of parsley which faded and withered in a few hours. And that work and training for that crown would only be temporary. But if the truth be told, all the world, the rewards we get on this earth will soon fade away. Uh, come on, y'all talk to me now. In my life, I have received many certificates and plaques, but one day my children, I know them, they're going to throw them away. I used to be a band director and I had a championship band. I went by the school not long ago and the, the trophies were pushed to the side. Oh my God. That's why, come on, somebody know what I'm talking about. That's why you should build your hopes on things eternal. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. I, Paul says in Corinthians 9 that a lot of people put a lot of efforts into rewards that don't last. But in the same verse, he says, we are working to obtain an incorruptible crown, a crown that cannot fade away. Because if man gives you a reward, he's liable to take it back. But when God gives you a reward uh, he'll give you something that the world didn't give and the world can't take away I'm so glad that God does not forget your work and labor of love uh, you see as you get older uh, people forget what you have done uh, pastors and other members forget what you have done uh, but one thing I like about God is that God never forgets uh, the work that you do for him uh, because you can't be God giving uh, no matter how hard you try. Anybody know the more you give, the more he'll give to you. The more you bless him, the more he'll bless you. God will never forget the 96 years of George's work as a dedicated church member as he took his office seriously and was diligent in everything he was assigned to do in Bethel. God didn't forget he gave of his time, his talent, and his treasure. You know what I'm I'm talking about money. He gave his all to make sure that the church had what it needed. He did not forget that George took care of pastors uh, to make sure that whatever the pastor needed, uh, they did not have uh, to worry about. Uh, I'm so glad. Uh, Y'all excuse me, but I got to celebrate George. Uh, I believe that God has got a recording angel that records all that we do. Uh, and one day the angel recorded the day that he got saved and joined Bethel. The angel recorded his sins, but I'm so glad that Brother George prayed and his sins were blotted out with the blood of Jesus. Can anybody say and celebrate what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And, and I'm so glad this morning that a few days ago that Brother George received an incorruptible crown, a crown that never fades away, a crown that will let everybody in heaven know for all eternity that he lived and worked for Jesus. Anybody glad that he's got his crown, an incorruptible crown? But that's not the only crown he got. That's why it pays to serve the Lord. He got an incorruptible crown. And now uh, Paul says it's a crown of life. James 1 and 12 tells us, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Look, this crown that I'm talking about is given to those who made it through some hard trials. If the truth be told, life can be downright hard. Brother Williams told me in his life he had to overcome all kinds of trials and tribulation. He had to deal with some racism. Come on, he was 96, y'all. He had to fight for his rights. He had some obstacles that he had to overcome. He had some hills that he had to climb. He crossed waters that were treacherous and cold. But I'm so glad that God promised that if you endure the trial, that he's going to bless you with the crown of life. The crown of life that is eternal life with the Lord. And my brothers and sisters, you spend eternity based on the decision.
decisions you made on this side of life. I don't care what preacher preaches your funeral. Can't no preacher preach you in the heaven. You got to know him. I wish I had a witness here. You got to know him for yourself. And I'm so glad that George believed what Jesus said in John 3, 16, that if you believe in me, you won't perish, but have everlasting life. And some of you said, I get everlasting life later. But don't you know the moment that you confess Jesus Christ, at that moment you have everlasting life. And some of you act like you don't have nothing to praise God for. But I stop by here to tell you, stop praising for cars and houses and material possessions, and you ought to praise him for everlasting I'm about finished. Next crown, next crown. Talks about 2 Timothy 4 and 6. Y'all know this. You heard Sister Stewart lift it up. He said, for I'm not ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. <laughs> I finished the course. I've kept the faith. Now that's laid up for me, Lord help me, a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me at that day, not only to me, but all those who uh, uh, love his appearing. Uh, George has uh, the crown uh, of righteousness. Uh, one thing I like about Brother George is that he never claimed that he was holier than thou. Uh, he never claimed that he was better or perfect than anybody else. Uh, he knew like all of us that all of us have sinned and come short uh, of the glory of God. Don't look at me like that. Uh, he knew we all know that all of our righteousness is just like uh, a filthy rat. He knew it was only by God's grace that you are saved and not of works lest any man should boast. He knew that when he accepted Jesus Christ, God stopped seeing him and began to see the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus in his life. He became a saint of God. Many of you think that being a Christian means you never make a mistake or that you don't have any shortcomings, but being a Christian simply means that you recognize that you've been given the grace of the salvation in Jesus Christ through his blood. Somebody say yeah. And I'm so glad that the next time when you see George you will see him like you never saw him before. He will have a new glorified body and he'll be wearing a wondrous set of crowns on his head. Sister Stewart, you're right. He was always dressed to the nines. He was always sharp. And he always had a hat on his head. But I'm so glad that when you see George, he'll be wearing an incorruptible crown. He'll be wearing the crown of life. He'll be wearing the crown of righteousness. And the Bible says in another section that he'll be wearing the crown of of glory. Somebody say yeah. Church I stopped by to tell you watch ye therefore you know not the day when the Lord shall call your soul away. When you labor striving for the light we shall wear a golden crown. Can anybody say that as soon as George got into heaven he he struck Zion. He laid down his heavy burden. And he's shouting all over glory. George was not all that demonstrative in his shout over here. But when he got into the presence of Jesus. How many know when you get in the presence of Jesus? It'll make you shout. It'll make you praise him. Somebody say yeah. And George, he stopped by the four and twenty elders. Where they cry out holy, holy. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth is full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord, most high. I got to celebrate. I'm so glad that when George received all of his crowns, I believe that when he saw the holiness of Jesus and all of his glory, I 
believe he threw down his crown before the feet of Jesus and he began to worship him and because he's a good A of me he began to sing all hail the power of Jesus name let angels prostrate fall bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all let me say that again bring forth the royal crown and crown him Lord of all and we here down there here have yet another opportunity to work out our soul salvation don't you wait till you get to heaven you ought to crown him Lord of all has God been good to anybody in here has God blessed anybody has God given you a reason to run on to see what the end is going to be come on give him a praise for the life for the legacy of George Williams and cares are past he's home at last ever to rejoice I gotta tell you he passed from here 96 years young and you know what somebody would say he lived a long time but you know what no matter when somebody passed you want a little bit more don't you there's no good time for someone to pass from us but I take particular joy, and you do as too as well, to know that when he closed his eyes on this side, that he opened them up in that land of pure delight where saints immortal reign. George is all right. You got to ask yourself, am I all right? Do I know him? Uh, would Jesus give me even one of them crowns? stop by here to tell you yes he will all you have to do is open your heart and accept him as the lord and savior of your life if there's a legacy that he leaves he want everybody especially in his family to know jesus for themselves i hope you join a local church but whatever you do don't leave this life and not be saved not be converted Let's pray all over this building. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of George. I thank you, Lord, that he lived a good life. He lived a life that you'd be pleased with. Thank you for this family who sought to his care and made sure that all was well. And so, Heavenly Father, there might be somebody in here today that's not quite sure. They think they got time. They think they got time to get right. They think they got time to get it together. But, Lord, let them know that tomorrow is not promised. And so, Lord, help them to realize they got to start getting some of them crowns that we talked about. Something that we can only obtain by opening our hearts and serving you. Lord, if there's somebody under the sound of my voice, either here or online, that doesn't know you in the pardon of their sins, Lord, I pray that they get right and do it now. Every head bowed, every eye closed in this house and even online. And you don't need to keep coming to funerals. And not be sure that everybody in your family knows Jesus. Not just where you're working. Not what your career is. Who cares how much money you're making if you leave here and you don't know Christ. Wherever you are. And we're going to say it together. Say it because we're going to see George again. But heaven is a place for prepared people. If you're not prepared, you're not going. And you don't, have to, you don't have to do a whole lot other than to accept what Jesus Christ has already done. All over, under the sound of my voice, repeat after me. Thank you, Jesus. You are so good. You are a merciful Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross, burying my sins, and rising on Sunday for my victory. I confess you as the Lord and Savior of my life. I know that you will be with me always. I thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise, everybody. Every family member knows you had your family members that prayed that prayer as the directors come at this time, amen. <laughs>